Yo, what's good everybody? What we're doing today is going to be another modern tier list and this is going to be something that's going to end up being monthly because one tier list from November is not going to be true until say February or March. So we're going to adapt to the format because modern is a very very fast moving format. So even though, spoiler, we have the same first place deck as always, we are going to have a pretty big shakeup in the modern tier list. So I've gone ahead, pulled up about 25, 30, something like that, of the best decks or most played decks in Modern, and we're going to see exactly how they rank up against each other, and all of this is according to my opinion, of course. So I'll be giving reasons why, but definitely make sure you participate in the comments and let me know if you disagree, have any insights, or if I simply left your favorite deck out. So we're going to go ahead, shoot right over to a whole list of decks. We've got everything sorted by letter. We are ready to go. Like I said, no surprise here, the very first place deck in the S tier is going to be an Uro deck, but this time it's been combined with Omnath, and not only is that just the best deck, honestly, far and away, but I don't really see that changing without a ban either. It's got really good tools to combat just about everything in the format. It gets to play counter spells, a very good inevitable win condition in Field of the Dead, another better inevitable win condition in Uro, and a way to cheat on mana in Omnath. This deck is actually insane. But joining it in the S tier, I believe, is going to be a not new deck, but a deck that has come to even more power than what it was before. And that for me is going to be Red Black Death Shadow. So we're going to go ahead and put that right in the S tier with the Uro Omnath lists. I think Earl Omnath is definitely better than Death Shadow, but Death Shadow does belong in the S tier. So this deck has been very popular and has shown some really good results and somehow has actually managed to get a lot of innovation along with it as well. So people are going back to like Grixia Shadow lists, they're going back to Mardo Shadow lists, really anything to try to tune and emulate these lists right here. But I think the real spice to these decks is that now a lot of people are playing either Bomat Courier or Knight's Whisper or both. And this deck just went from a pretty good, slightly aggressive deck with Thought Seizes to a deck with some very real late game and card advantage. So I think those innovations have placed this deck from being the A tier where it was last month all the way up to the S tier this month. Very, very good job on that deck. And then the third S tier deck is not really much of a spoiler, but I still think it belongs up here with its slightly less budget-friendly cousin. And that's going to be the... <clears throat> excuse me. Here he is. It's going to be the Earl decks that do not feature Omnath. And these are going to be the... Saltai Uros and Teamer Uros of the universe that are still playing very, very good control decks, but without the ridiculous mana generation that Omnath provides. Other than that, they're almost the same lists. The Teamer list even still gets to play Ren and Six. Um, so I think these decks are still pretty insane, just not as insane as the Omnath Uro lists. And now we're going to go ahead and just kind of sort out all the rest of these guys as we see them. So now that our S tier, I believe, is pretty well defined, we can put decks in as we just come across them. So the first one we see here is going to be Ad Nauseam. And Ad Nauseam combo, I think, is still really good, relatively consistent, which is great in a combo deck, because with all three of the best decks having either Thought Seize or Counter Spells, or both in this deck's case, I think um, you need to be a very consistent combo deck if you're going to play a combo, and Ad Nauseam is that. So I'm actually going to slide Ad Nauseam right into B tier. Um, I don't know that it necessarily belongs in A tier just yet, but it's doing a very good job. Um, it does, I think, need to see a little more play or get just one more piece to be like ultra consistent rather than just pretty consistent. Um, so that's where I think this deck goes for right now. And our next deck is going to be Oops All Spells. And this is, I believe, what Ad Nauseam really wants to be. It's a very consistent deck that needs to resolve a creature, not a spell, to actually do with most of its winning. So it's almost immune to force negation. 
and it pretty consistently wins its earliest turn too. However, it is very easy to hate out, even more so than Ad Nauseam. So I think that this deck is not S tier as of right now, but it is very solidly an A tier deck. Our next deck is going to be Storm, and Storm is honestly more consistent than Ad Nauseam, but I also believe it is much easier to hate out. So Storm for me, unfortunately, is going to live in B tier, but definitely behind Ad Nauseam. Um, Storm is not one to be overlooked, but I do think a deck that is both weak to force negation, at least in some uh, some capacity, you have remands to help with that, but a deck that is both weak to force negation and weak to graveyard hate um, is just not going to thrive in a format that contains both of these decks. But Storm is not to be overlooked, so I do think it still lives in B tier and not C. And next, actually I think this is going to be our first C tier deck, and this is going to be Ponza, the green-red mid-range deck. And this deck, while I actually do like this deck a lot, it is pretty powerful, but its highest mark is playing Blood Moon. And right now I believe that this is a format uh, where most decks are either two colors and therefore somewhat immune to Blood Moon or are just too fast to care whether you have it or not or play enough basics to the point where it just does not matter whether you have this or not. So in the example of say like Oops All Spells for example, even if you have Blood Moon, this deck nine times out of ten does not care. Like it plays Pentad Prism and it plays Talisman of Dominance or whatever the green-black one is called. Um, and if you resolve a Blood Moon, not only do they not care, they're also just going to kill you. Um, so that's just, like, it's not a great place to be for Ponza, unfortunately. It is very good at beating a lot of the Fair Magic decks, but honestly, like, Fair Magic is either way, way more powerful than you in the case of Uro and Omnath, or non-existent, which a lot of people are saying decks like Jandar. So I don't think Ponza happens to be in a great place right now. Our next deck, and a little bit of a new addition to this here, is going to be um, the Hammer Time decks. And these are going to be the decks that feature Stoneforge Mystic, Sigarda's Aid, and Colossus Hammer to try to one-shot you either with just a big double-striking thing or Colossus Hammer on an Ink Moth Nexus or some other equally ridiculous equipment-filled kill. And this deck can kill very, very early. Like, it's a, actually a pretty consistent turn 3, turn 4 deck. And I believe that this deck might actually be a little more consistent than something like ad nauseum especially since it's definitely a turn faster and i think this deck belongs in b tier but above ad nauseum in the b tier next up we're gonna have traditional burn and this once again is gonna be lava spike eidolon and friends so i think burn is unfortunately for this deck still not in a great place so i think this deck is better than Ponza, but still solidly listed in C tier. And the reason that this deck is actually even C and not D tier is almost entirely based off the strength of Eidolon and the Great Rebel, as that card can just beat some slower decks by itself. But overall, I don't believe Lava Spike is a good place to be when two out of the three best decks are both playing Uro and Omnath. Like, just... Their primary win conditions are also gaining life along the way. I don't I don't think this is a great plan for these guys to be in right now. Um, and it's unfortunate because I think this deck used to be a great litmus test for the format. Like, hey, can your deck race burn? If so, then it might be a good deck. And I think that the format has far outpaced that rule. The burn rule really just does not apply to modern anymore. Um, so our next deck is going to be the Eldamri's Call Toolbox decks. And I like these decks a lot. I think that they are solidly A tier decks. However, I do not believe that these are as strong as the dedicated Primeval Titan decks. Um, especially since like the amulet version of this deck can just win or come very close to it as early as turn two. And also is just much more consistent since it's not trying to be cute with Eladomri's call. It's just 
okay, here's a Titan, let me shove this down your throat. And that type of focus, I believe, is exactly what you want to be doing in Modern right now if you want to be playing the best deck. Unless you are playing something like Earl Omnath, which just is the best deck at doing everything at once. Um, so I think Eladomri's Call is a good deck, but not the best because, well, by nature of being a toolbox deck, it is unfocused. Um, so our next deck is going to be Hardened Scales, and this is going to be another new addition to our tier list here. So Hardened Scales is not a new deck, but it is seeing a decent amount of play and a little bit of, I guess, a resurgence in popularity. So Hardened Scales, I believe this deck has a ton of potential, and almost all of that entirely depends upon its pilot. This is definitely one of the hardest decks in Modern to play, and it will reward you for being good at the deck. Um, with that said, things that hate artifacts, because decks like Tron live in this tier, are also going to hit your hardened scale stuff pretty hard. And cards that specifically exile your creatures, like Path to Exile, also make life not super difficult, but... They will make you think sometimes, and a lot of those exist in the format right now. So I do think this deck is going to be just below Hammer Time. I think it's here. I think it is better than Ad Nauseam. Um, because this deck is very, very consistent thanks to the Ozolith. And honestly, it kills about as quickly as Ad Nauseam does too. But... Again, just playing a bunch of artifacts does make you weak to cards that people are already playing, like Stony Silence and Collect the Roof. So I do think that this deck is very, very strong, but might have just a little bit of wrong place, wrong time syndrome. With that said, if it has a pilot who wants to play this deck, it is very powerful because this deck can and will run people over. Uh, so our next deck is going to be, ooh, Mill. And this is actually one of my favorite decks. So Mill, I think, is actually in a pretty good place. So the Mill deck is, I don't know that I would necessarily call it strong right now. But it's got the upside of having a lot of very good matchups in the meta by just existing as a Mill deck. And... I'm going to slide it right here between Ad Nauseam and Storm. I do believe it is definitely better than Storm, but I don't believe it as good as Ad Nauseam. The reason for that is this deck preys on honestly most of the best decks. So like it's got Archive Traps, which naturally hate on things like Uro and Omnath that want to just be using a bunch of fetch lands. It's got main deck surgicals, which lets it hate on things like oops all spells, even in game one. Um, Eladomri's Call, the card Eladomri's Call wants to search. So it just activates your archive traps that you already want to be playing for free more often than you would already want to. And it plays main deck Field of Ruin, which is great against things like Field of the Dead and like, well, half of this deck so like all the valakut stuff that they might have going on um so it's got some very very good prey at the top of the format but i do think that this deck is a enough of a known quantity that people are playing hate cards for it so people are playing like nexus of fate in their control decks they're playing gaia's blessing in their green decks they're playing emrakuls and ulamogs in their colorless decks things that just let you shuffle your entire graveyard back into your deck without having to use mana for those effects. And because of those things existing pretty much everywhere in the format right now, Mill, I do believe, is stuck in B tier for a little bit. Once people start to sleep on this deck again because of the great matchups it has at the top of the meta, I think it can be A again. But I don't think right now is that time because of the fact that it's a known quantity. Ooh, so our next deck is going to be a Heliod combo. And Heliod combo is actually, in my opinion, very close to being an S tier deck. It's really, really good. And, in my opinion, even better than the Oops All Spells deck. Um, I believe this is going to be probably the top of our A tier deck by the end of this discussion. But 
I don't believe it is as good as any of these decks because well, by nature of being a slightly linear combo deck, it is kind of easy to shut down sometimes. But Heliod is very powerful. Infinite life and infinite damage are great. Anything that gets to play like Collect the Company has the ability to just kind of win out of nowhere, and this deck can do that. And you even get the bonus of having like Conclave Mentor so that you can do your best Hardened Scales impression, giving you insane attack power too. So I think this deck has just about everything a creature deck really wants to have um but the downsides of being a creature deck are still very much there so i think it's stuck being an a tier for right now but this deck is very very good okay so next are going to be um our our traditional control decks and these are going to be where decks like blue white control live like cleansing wildfire live um and Honestly, just like anything that you would see on like, I don't know, like Aspiring Spikes content. Like, this is where all the Jace the Mind Sculptor decks live. And I think that these decks are surprisingly pretty good. Um, so, I think they actually go right about here. So, I did think last month that some of these decks are... A little better than they are right now last month I think their their ability to combat the entire format has decreased but people are pioneering these lists haha <laughs> pun not intended um people are pioneering these lists so that they can once again fight a lot of what the formats doing but I think the format has gotten to the point where it's linear enough to where it's either have the right piece at the right time or just die to stuff and your win conditions have to be insanely powerful for you to really let you break that rule and the win conditions for like the earl omnath decks and like death shadow are powerful to break that powerful enough to break that rule i don't believe the jace the mind that de uh, sculptor decks are i think jace is just weak enough to have to live in b tier but that does not mean these decks are actually weak at all like um i saw a list on twitch earlier this week where like blood sun plus lotus field allowed for just like hard cast shark typhoons really early in Stuff like that will still just get your opponent dead. So, like, you do have to look out for these decks. But I think that they are not the strongest in the meta, and that's probably okay. Uh, so our next deck is going to be Tron. And when I say Tron, just assume I always mean Mono Green Tron. Of course, other Tron variants exist. I believe they are all weaker than Mono Green Tron. And Mono Green Tron, I think, is going to be our first deck that's, like, at the very bottom of a tier but is still definitely a thing right now so i think tron it's almost it's like main highlight is probably the fact that like karn the great creator is just very very good against a lot of decks so like if you are for example on the play a well-timed karn great creator like as early as turn three can actually just beat oops all spells by itself um because they won't get to use their artifact mana they won't get to like resolve their spells and you can take over the game by the time that would you know normally come around otherwise um you can resolve a card a great creator and basically beat hammer time almost by itself like a resolved um ensnaring bridge takes care of almost this entire section of the meta unless like these two decks have cryptic command or this person has culligan's command um and it stops walking Ballista altogether from here. Also, Oblivion Stone stops almost everything, like, here and below, too. So, I think that Tron's actually in a pretty good place to be right now. Even though I personally hate that deck. And, ooh, another new addition. So, another new addition to this list is going to be the Red-Black Midrange decks. And these are going to be the decks that play, like, Croxa and Season Pyromancer and Blood Moon... And are just trying to like outvalue you with red and black cards now i understand that these decks have gotten pretty popular in the last month or so my only real problem with these decks is that unfortunately actually i have two problems with this deck um first 
just their main plan of trying to outvalue you with black cards, I believe is strictly worse in disrupting your opponent than the dedicated Death Shadow decks are. And I also believe that just like by nature of like playing cards like Thoughtseize, like Thoughtseize is just not never better than a row. Um, and it just kind of stinks is a game plan unless you back it up with an insane clock. Death Shadow can do that, Red Black cannot. So I think Red Black is unfortunately going to live around, nope, not worse. I think it is better than Burn, but I think it is going to live in C tier. And it kind of stinks because I like this deck. Like playing cards like um, Season the Pyromancer, that card's sweet. Playing cards like Croxa, another card that I think is really sweet. And it plays the, um, the Skelementals, which do have the ability to just take over a game. But when your opponent's playing cards like like Earl, like Omnath, and like Heliod, I don't know that this is really the best place for you to be. Um, so next on our list is going to be Death and Taxes. And this is a deck that I think has vastly improved. Like, it was already pretty good, but I think this deck might actually just be like here. Nope here um and a lot of that is actually due to the card that's right here in the picture leonard arbiter so i believe that the more people are trying to play cards like primeval titan and like eladomri's call the better cards like leon and arbiter and even mind sensor get and the rest of death and taxes plan was already pretty good against the format because cards like field of the dead were just never going to do anything against field of ruin cards like um, Stoneforge Mystic are still just very good against a lot of the more aggressive decks in their format. And you get to play, like, cool things like Flicker Wisps, just make sure, like, any of the Death Shadows of the world can't really attack you for lethal unless you allow it. Stuff like that is always very, very good, but now that the format's gotten even more land-based, I think that is even better for Death and Taxes than it was previously. And it was already pretty good previously. Um, so I think this deck is just in a very 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 good spot for anybody who actually wants to put in the work of getting good at it of course being death and taxes the same as it is in legacy you do need to put the work in to actually be good with this deck otherwise it is going to fail it's still just like a pile of two twos but the better you are with the deck the better the deck looks and next ooh, and this one's actually going to warrant some discussion too is going to be merfolk now, last month, I put this deck in the C tier, and since last month, this deck has gotten a really, really sweet development in a Pure Sight Marrow combo. Now, for anybody who happens to be unaware of the combo, it's been essentially the talk of the town this week. And what I mean by the combo is you use Pure Sight Marrow along with Paradise Mantle. And the way that combo works is that Pure Sight Meryl lets you exile the top card of your deck, but when you have a Paradise Mantle, you get to tap it for mana. That mana provides the mana necessary for the untap ability. So you play a Pure Sight Meryl, you equip a Paradise Mantle onto it, and now you have access to tap for mana, untap it to exile, tap for mana, untap it to exile. You rinse and repeat until your entire deck's gone. Once your entire deck's gone, you just put a Thassa's Oracle's ability on the stack. And because you're already playing Merfolk, this is almost always an uncounterable thing. So you have access to either Cavern of Souls or the Aether Vial. And now that you have this uncounterable, uncounterable trigger, I mean, I guess they could be playing Tails in or Nimble Obstructionist or, I don't know, Squelch. But like outside of those types of things, your Thassa's Oracle ability is going to resolve and you're going to win the game. This can be done as soon as turn three. And... If you don't have that on turn three, so what? You're still playing Merfolk. Your opponent still has to be able to actually kill you while you're killing them. Remember, this deck still gets to play things like, well, the Merfolk themselves, so you're stuck looking at a bunch of 4-4s four attacking you. They're usually uncounterable things to things like Spreading Seas, and this deck still gets to play Force Negation. I think having access to an infinite combo, even if it can be slightly clunky and the Paradise Mantle otherwise does you no good in the deck i think that is still enough to catapult this deck an entire tier higher than it was last month 
So I think Merfolk actually lives in B tier right now and above Storm. Um, like I said, the deck already had some very good matchups. For example, like a Merfolk Trickster does a lot of very good work against Death Shadow just all by itself. And, you know, like it plays enough basics so that Death and Taxes doesn't scare it too, too much. Although Sword of Fire and Ice still sucks. And it's got Force Negation, so it has pray, um, it has some play against things like Ad Nauseam. And it has a lot of play against Tron. So I think, like, all of those things, when you add in an infinite combo to the deck, make it so that this deck went from being fine to legitimately scary. So I think I actually like this deck's position in the metagame right now. So, up a whole tier. Awesome. Um, next on our list is going to be the Mono Red Prowess decks. And... I believe Mono Red is the best variant of these decks, but I understand that decks like Blue Red Prowess exist. I'm not talking about those today. I think Mono Red Prowess is definitely the best of those bunch, or best of that bunch, whichever. And that deck is still sadly A tier. I think it is a little worse than Death and Taxes, even though I believe it beats Death and Taxes. And it's got some great matchups across a lot of the format. So, like, just. By nature of being an insanely aggressive deck, it can make Death Shadow like worry about their life total a lot more than it normally would have to against the other decks. Um, it actually has the ability to just get under Uro and Omnath, and you can just get dead before you are ever able to escape an Uro. Um, and some variants of this deck have actually started playing Black to play Reign of Gore, so that they don't even lose the Heliod, and I think that is awesome. Um, of course, the Obosh decks can't do that because Reign of Gore is even cost. But the non-Obosh versions, I thought that was hilarious the first time I saw that. Um, but also the card Lava Dart just beats a lot of archetypes itself. For example, I usually play Spirits, and I hate Lava Dart out of these decks. That card sucks. But the deck's very, very good, and I don't know. like Anybody who wants to like play a great magic deck for $200... I think Prowess is your best bet. Um, so our next deck on here is going to be Amulet Titan. And I think specifically Amulet Titan is probably the best Primeval Titan deck right now. Um, and I believe it's definitely better than Eladomri's Call. But I do not believe that it is really, I guess, above here anymore. I th um, Last month I thought this deck was very, very, very sweet. But now it's like even more of a known quantity than it was last month somehow and it was definitely a known quantity last month and that's made death uh, decks like death and taxes and like prowess um i guess better in the meta and death shadow i believe is also a part of why i don't think this deck is as good as it was last month but it's still very very good um so i believe this deck lives around here and it is really really easy to pilot a lot of the time now that you just have like dryad and you can just okay here's titan here's a dryad get dead um previously this deck took a lot of effort in thinking like death and taxes but now i think it's got some great i win buttons and there's also been a lot of innovation to these lists too so you know people are not just playing mono green anymore there, there's a lot of stuff happening here i actually played against the blue green variant today um like, people are just doing all kinds of weird but cool things with these decks, and I think it's here to stay. Let's see, our next deck is going to be Boggles. Ooh, and Boggles, I think, it always has, like, a weird place in the meta game, but I actually don't think that this is the meta for this deck to really thrive, which is weird to say. Um, but thankfully, because I don't really like this deck, I can actually put this all the way down in D tier now. And... I think the reason this deck lives in D tier is because a lot of the decks that it wants to ignore, traditional creature decks, have already been pushed out of the format. So like, you know, this deck doesn't really get to prey on decks like Jund or like humans because people are already not really playing Jund or humans anymore. Like it doesn't really get to beat the infinite life deck at all, it isn't faster than oops all spells. It can barely, if at all, attack through Primeval Titan, and Saltai or uh, four-color variants of Uro 
either of these decks has access to Crypto Command, Tapped Your Team, and Return Mystic Sanctuary. So, like, these decks legitimately don't care if you get online or not. They'll just make zombies and kill you eventually. Um, wow, you can't do anything to disrupt that combo that was just named. And the Red Black Death Shadow deck <laughs> will sometimes just wait for you to put something with lifelink on and then just play a rain of gore so like it's just your your plan is just unfortunately not very good against what the metagame is actually doing right now making this deck lose all of its cool surprise i win factor because even when you do catch somebody by surprise your main plan doesn't beat what the format's doing so i think this deck is just kind of poorly placed right now um our next deck is going to be um, in a Snapcaster Mage. In Snapcaster Mage, I specifically mean a different list from the Jason Mind Sculptor Control decks. By these, I mean the blue red variants. Um, and these are going to be the ones that are playing either Blue Moon and uh, Blood Moon in the main with like Kiki Jiki on the top end, or the decks that are playing no islands in the main copies of boil in the sideboard and they're playing like through the breach plus emerald cool either way and i think that both variants of these decks live right around here i think they're not as good as the colossus hammer decks but i think they're actually really good because of just how good either blood moon is against primeval titan or how good boil is against uro and whichever direction you choose to take this deck in, I think either way is a pretty good choice, depending on which fights you want to fight right now. And having Oops I Win buttons of your two card combos, whether they're Through the Breach and Emrakul, or Kiki Jiki plus Insert Untapper here, um, I think either variant is pretty good right now. Um, I think Through the Breach is a little better, but either deck is definitely serviceable and that makes this a good place to be right now. The only problem that this deck usually has is that cards like Tarmogoyf just automatically beat everything Blue Red is doing. But Tarmogoyf isn't really part of the format right now, so these decks' biggest weakness isn't a thing, which makes, I think, this a great place to be. So next is going to be us, Spirits. Hi, that's us. And unfortunately for spirits i think the 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 green decks are just way too powerful for most of what we're doing so we are still living in b tier but i actually think that unfortunately we are probably a little worse than mill right now um if i'm being honest i think we're actually worse than merfolk now that they have an infinite combo um i'd put us on either side of merfolk right now so I'm going to put us here only because I don't believe these guys have figured out their final deck list yet. Once they do, these positions probably get switched. But I think for all of the decks that Skyclave Apparition is strong against, this deck wins by a mile and it's generally not close. Which actually does mean great things if you're a Spirits Pirate. Uh, pirate if you're a spirits pilot and you want to take it to a big tournament because all three of these top decks are actually pretty good for us um so like death shadow this deck is not cold to but definitely weak to a skyclave apparition and either of these two decks are relatively weak to uncounterable spell quellers um i think that decks that can get under us like prowess and hammer time have some very very real fight in the metagame since like giver of runes is pretty obnoxious and the card lava dart just like beats half of our deck by itself um but we do have some also polarizingly bad matchups too being like primeval titan unlimited life and sometimes just like a resolved dryad of the elysian grove um, there's also the fact that this deck can win as early as turn two, and we need to get to turn three to combat this most of the time. So I think that like those up and down matchups are why we are able to thrive in the format, but we are still stuck in B tier, and honestly towards the bottom half of B tier at this point in time.
Uh, so our next deck is going to be Traditional Dredge. And I think that, honestly, right now, if you're watching this and you're a Dredge pilot, just apologies in advance, but d get it together. Um, I don't think this deck is in a great place at all right now. And most of that is because Oops All Spells is all the way up here. And I think Traditional Dredge is at a very, very wrong place, wrong time. Um, because, like, if one of the best decks in the format is a very, very fast graveyard deck, obviously that means that the rest of the format is going to adapt, and people are going to be having a lot of graveyard hate that affects you. And sometimes, especially in the case of, like, Tron, they'll play those main deck graveyard hate cards in their, well, main deck. So these guys will play, like, Relic of Progenitus into main. Um, I mean, Infinite Life sucks for you anyway. Cryptic Command usually sucks for you anyway. Um, Death and Taxes actually sucks for Dredge a lot of the times because Dredge will either mulligan or just have to keep one-landers based on the strength of life in the loam. And this deck doesn't care if you want those one-landers. This deck usually plays Blood Moon. This deck is just faster than you anyway a lot of the time and honestly more powerful without the graveyard hate. This deck caused all the graveyard hate to be in the format right now. This deck you actually have a pretty good matchup against. And these two not only gain life as part of their main plan, disrupting a lot of your main plan, but they also just play like Cryptic Command for tap your team and that's a lot of the times enough. Um, so I don't think that playing Dredge is an, a, a good idea right now. Um, so our next deck is going to be Traditional Jund. And I think Jund is probably here. Um, which kind of stinks, because, like, you know, a, a deck that hasn't changed for, like, 10 years, for the most part, um, still looks pretty nice. But I don't believe Jund does anything the format wants to be doing right now. Like, I think the disrupting, disruption part of Jund is actually worse than Death Shadow, because it's not accompanied by a very fast clock. Like, Tarmogoyf is a pretty fast clock, but, like, a 4-5 is not the same as, like, a 10-10. Um, and that matters a lot in Modern right now, because the decks are just really, really fast. Like, Jund has almost no way outside of Discard of actually dealing with a Resolved Heliod, and most of the other decks in the format do. Like, this deck could adapt a lot like Blue or Black Red has, and they could play, like, Reign of Gore in the sideboard or something, but that plan generally isn't really good enough. And then... Once again, the same as Black Red, just by nature of Jun's disruption being black, that almost automatically makes your plan against Uro terrible. Because, like, a Thought Seize or a Liliana is not going to outvalue an Uro. Honestly, even if you get the resolved minus six of Liliana off, that might still just not beat an Uro. Um, so, sad times for Jun, but I think that's where they live. Now our de next deck is going to be another Sad Times deck, which kind of stinks, because this deck I like. Um, if you're sensing a trend, I do like Aether Vial nonsense. But I think Humans is going to live right uh, like here or here. I think it is definitely worse than Red Black, but I don't know if I like it to be better or worse than Jund. And I think it is a little better than Jund, but not by much. And the reason I do like it over Jund by just a little bit is the existence of Meddling Mage. I think that deck needs that card to be able to win almost any games of Magic right now. Like, without Meddling Mage, I think this deck is just pushed all the way out of the format. But with Meddling Mage, at least it can try to compete. But with that said, I think that this deck is honestly pretty bad right now. And a lot of it's due to just like the existence of most of the tools that are existent in modern right now naturally beating humans plan A. So like both of these decks play, you know, some varied removal. Like this deck plays both Lightning Bolt and Path to Exile. This deck plays both Fatal Push and Blood Chief's Thirst. And Medley Mage doesn't just shut off their only removal the deck's playing. Like, like it used to just name Path to Exile against control decks and just, you know, 
not care what the rest of the plan was, that's no longer an applicable plan because just better removal spells and more removal spells exist. A lot of times it can't compete with this deck just based on the strength of Luris plus Seal of Fire. That combination alone beats like three quarters of the human's deck by itself. Um, but you can sometimes just get really lucky with like Meddling Mage and just like name Primeval Titan or like name Salvage Titan or something like that. And you'll just end up being okay. But that is definitely not every matchup in the format. And to be honest, it's not particularly close. Um, so I think just like the natural plan of here's a one drop, here's a two drop, here's a three drop just honestly isn't really that good anymore against most of the format. And our last deck that we're going to go over today is going to be Eldrazi Tron. Now here's a deck that I do like, but once again it's got its polarizing matchups. And I think that this deck is, I think here, definitely better than humans. Um, actually no, here. And I don't think I can put it into B tier because I think it is nowhere near as strong as Storm. But... I do like it better than Red Black because Chalice of the Void on one will steal you more wins than any Blood Moon will. And, well, not any Blood Moon, but you get the idea. I think that this deck has the ability to be powerful, but just facing a lot of being weak to a lot of hate for really everything and not just choosing a direction and going with it i think is just not really a place where you want to be like this deck happens to be relatively weak to artifact hate and it happens to be relatively weak to just sweepers and other creature hate but it doesn't really get too much of the upside of playing either of those cards other than the ability to play things a little early so like Yes, you have the ability to do things like turn 2 Thought Not Seer or turn 3 Tron, but even the payoffs that you get from doing those things don't typically beat most of the format right now. Now, Chalice of the Void on 1, that is a very real payoff, and that's actually the only reason I think I'm putting Eldrazi Tron anywhere other than D tier. Um, actually, I think Chalice on 1 is why it's at the top of C tier. But outside of exactly Chalice on 1, really, what is this deck doing that actively beats most of the rest of the format? So, like, thanks to Death Shadow playing both Death Shadow and Scourge of the Skyclaves, a 5-5 Reality Smasher is not scary for the format anymore. Like, a 5-5 Reality Smasher, honestly, even if it's on, like, turn 3, is kind of a shoulder shrug to have the format because they're already used to just being stuck looking at 10 tens or dying to oops all spells um or just looking at things that are scarier than a reality smasher like uro so i don't think that this deck can really intimidate people too much anymore like a turn two reality i'm sorry a turn two thought not seer that is scary and that is annoying but if that's the only clock that you're presenting as a eldrazi tron player most of the rest of the deck can just deal with a 4-4 just fine so I think that most of the scary things that this deck can be doing are great, but are no longer the scariest things in the format, which is why this deck has been on a decline for so long. However, Chalice on 1 is still great. So if these people want to start playing like Simeon Spirit Guide to make that happen on turn 1 more often, I think that will be more of a route to victory for this deck than really anything else. But as of right now, I don't think that's really the the deck you want to be playing on purpose but these are going to be i guess the uh the most popular decks that are played right now and if i left out your favorite deck let me know in the comments if i you know if you have any arguing points that you want to make with me maybe you think my top decks aren't the top maybe you think your deck is better for reasons i might have missed who knows either way let me know what you think in the comments and if you like the material just make sure to like the channel and subscribe to this. Thanks, and I'll see y'all on the next one.